Greetings and salutations and welcome back to another Power Query tutorial by me, James, your BA Sensei. Today we're going to be looking at networking hours between two dates with times. We're basically going to see how many hours have passed from the start date and time to the end date and time, considering working hours and public holidays. So let me show you how to do it. All right, all right. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with a blank query. You go to get data, other sources, and blank query. So once you're in Power Query, let's quickly just change the name here of working hours. Open the advanced editor because we're going to do a function. We start with the function the curly brackets and rocket ash. Because we're going to be looking at hours between one date and another date, we need to start with perimeters. We say first date as date time, second date as date time. That's what we're going to start with. Just going to delete the source over there. So we're going to create a date list. First of all, I'm going to create a date list from the first date to the second date. So how do we do that? We do it by using list generate. So I'm going to say date list. That's my variable name. I'm just giving it a arb name. You can call that anything you want. I'm going to use list generate. You can see that list generate takes three input parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a start the bracket over here. Yes, I'm going to open the ash, the rocket ash there. I'm going to say generate from first date, which is the date I'm giving it. Okay, and now I'm iterating each where it is smaller than the second date and each each value I'm giving it is going to increment with a duration. I'm going to show you how that works now. 0, 0, 30, 0. And I'm going to close it up. What exactly does that duration mean? All right, so the official documentation here, this is the sharp duration. Basically, the very first number represents days, the second one hours, minutes and seconds. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to do it in 30 minute increments. So let me quickly just show you that I'm going to return it, show you what this does. And we say date list return. I'm going to quickly invoke the function, let's say from the 1st of May to the 5th of May, I'm gonna say invoke. So you can see what it did now, because we said for each half an hour, it takes from the 1st of May each half an hour and creates a list. And that is because in here, we said 30, if I make this, let's take the minutes away and I make this, that's the hours, let's say that make that one, and it's going to do it for every single hour. Now you're going to see a row for every single hour. Okay, I'm just going to stick to 30 minute increments because I want to count time in terms of half an hours. Now that we have a list of dates, next thing I want to do is I want to convert this list, convert that to a table. So I'm just going to say date list. That's the variable name. And I'm going to say table from list I need to give it a list. So that's the date list. If I now look at this, it should give me but it's giving me an error. Why is that it's quickly going to show you Because what we need to do is we need to Take this date list and we need to split it. I'm going to use a splitter and I'm going to split it by nothing. What happens then in that case, if I say done, I look at what I've customed it. Uh, there we go. We basically now have a perfect list in a table for each working half an hour um, between the start and end dates. Now, next, what I want to do is I want to convert this to date time because up until that point, it was just text table transform column column types table name, I'm going to say date list table. Yes, that's the input. And I'm going to convert in a data set column one column that we added date time. All right. And now let's just check what happened there. Look at it now. Now it's a date time column. Wonderful. I want to exclude weekends. And I know weekends is on day six and day zero. Day zero is a Sunday and day six is a Saturday. So I need to add a column for the weekday table add column I need to select a table and that's the date time list. I'm going to say weekday each date day of week, right? And I'm going to feed it column one, I'm going to say this is an int 32 type, it's an integer, remember to close it out in M days. So if we look at this, you can see there's the Saturday and there's the Sunday day zero. So we know that a Saturday is six and a Sunday is seven or zero. So we want to get rid of those. We want to filter them out. Table select rows I need to give it a table and remember the table is weekdays. And I'm going to say each Remember we added a column in the previous step called weekday. I'm going to say 
weekday is not equal to zero and is not equal to six. Here we go. Look at this. And now suddenly there should be no sixes and uh, zeros. You can see we skip from the fifth to the eighth. It skips six and zero. Pretty cool. I know that my business day starts at, let's say, at eight and it ends at five. So I need to have some sort of a way to tell this function that my business hours start at seven to five. But before I can do that, I need to have a time column as well. So I'm going to add a time column. So I'm going to call this time column added. Say so table add column. So I'm going to add it to the current table. No week ends the previous step. That's the table I'm adding it to. I'm saying this new column is going to be called time and I'm going to tell it each date time from remember column one is our column that we're looking at. So I'm going to say close this one out. Now, if we looked at the invoke function, there we have the actual time, the time split out from the actual day. Now I want to indicate my business hour start time and end time and see if it falls within those half an hour brackets. First, I'm going to declare new parameters. I'm going to say business hour start and this is going to be a number. I'm going to say business hours end as number. I'm going to call this business hours check business hours and I'm going to say so from the table select rows. Yeah, go from the time call the previous call added the previous step. Yes. And each each for each record where the time column remember I added the time column in the previous step is greater than hash time. I'm going to show you what this means in a moment. I'm going to say business hour start. Yes, zero, zero and time. So basically where the time is greater than the start hours, the start time. Let me quickly show you the documentation here. So you can see the official documentation. The first one is a reference to an hour. The second value is to minute and the third one to seconds. So if we look at this, this is basically looking at the hours. That's why those two are zero. So where time is greater than my start time and is lesser than business hours end. Close the bracket out. I'm just going to return working hours. So now let's quickly go back. We can invoke the function and say from there to there. Let's say our business day starts at eight and it ends at 1700 hours, right? So now you see this actually starts counting at 830. So the first half an hour after that, and we should have nothing later than 1700 hours at the end of the date period. Cool. I'm going to now count the rows row count. It's equal to number. I'm going to round the number round. What am I rounding? I'm going to say table. I want to do a row count of what I don't want to do a row count of all the working hours. But remember, I want to divide it by two because there's two half an hours within an hour. And I want to round um, I want to round up to the closest one. All right. So now that I have that, I want to say what's the return count that is simply if it's the protection for the function if row count is less than zero, then return zero else. Just return row count. This should return the total number of working hours between a start date and the end date. You can see there's 63 working hours between that date and that date. Okay, cool. So that's not the only thing that I want. What I want to do is I want to exclude public holidays as well. So how do I do that? Let's quickly delete this one. In order to do that, I need to pull in a holiday table. So you can see I have a holiday table over here. And in here is all the holiday, the public holidays. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull it into Power Query. This one is called the holiday table. So it's date time. I don't really want it to be date time. I'm going to convert this to time or date only because it's the whole day. If we look at our function, I'm just going to quickly go one step back. I'm just going to say return the work hours so we can see what's going on here. If you go to the function, you can see this column one is a date time format. So I want to join the holiday table to this table over there, but I, I can't join a date time to a time. So I need to convert this column into a date format. So I'm going to go into the editor. 
I'm going to say table transform columns. And I'm going to say give me the working hours without the, the little curly brackets. And it's remember it's called column one. I'm going to re I'm going to take column one. I'm going to take the date time and I'm going to make a date type date. Now that should be converted to date time. So let me quickly just check. You look at it now. This is now converted to date. Pretty cool. Which means I can now join. I want to do a anti join. So what is an anti join? I want to take this thing and I want to do an anti join to this one. Anti joins. So what is an anti join? An anti join. If you can imagine, this is the date list, is the left one, and this is all the holidays. An anti join will basically say anything that has a crossover where it has the same date. So let's say it has a public holiday excluded. So the anti join will every be everything on the left excluding the ones where it actually joined. So this is an anti join. So I'm going to do an anti join between the holiday table and the date tables that I have here. So how do I do that? Let me call this step. Okay. Table. Nest. Join. Yes. I'm going to join conversion, the previous step. Yes. I'm going to take column because that one has a column one, which is the date column. And I'm going to combine it with I need to on the perimeter side, I need to introduce a table I want to introduce here. So I'm going to say give it a table and that table is going to be called holidays as a table. Yes. And I'm going to join it over here to holidays. Yes. And in that holidays table, my column there is called days. Yes. And I'm going to say the join kind is a left anti join. Yes, that should do the trick. So now we should have a new invocation here, let's say from the 30th to the 10th, the 11th. So let's say our day starts at eight, it ends at 17. The holidays table is the holidays table. And we say invoke. You can see because we told it to start at the 30th. And we actually said to exclude public holidays. So the 30th was on a Sunday. That's going to start in a second, but it's it skipped the first because if you look at the holiday table, the first is a public holiday. So it skipped that and it skipped the third because you can see the third was a public holiday. That's the anti join kicking in over there. So that's pretty cool. So now we just need to round it up and we say that count there should now be based on excluding holidays because that's the previous step. And the return count there should be returned over there. Should give us one answer. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to test it. So let's see from the 30th to there. Business hour starts at eight and to 17 and the holidays table is that one. This one's going to give us round amount of hours. But what I want to do is quickly go back. I'm going to use this little test sheet with two date ranges with time and everything. I'm going to pull this into Power Query. Yeah, and I'm just going to say, let's add a column. And we're going to use my custom function working hours function, we're going to give it first of all, the first date, the second date, the business hours start at eight, they end at 17. And the holidays is the holiday table. Cool. And let's see what it spits out. There we go. So there's your working hours between those two dates, considering half an hour increments rounded to the closest um, um, decimal up. So you can see there's a 0.5, which is half an hour. And it, it considers week weekends and public holidays. How cool is that? Well, I hope this really helped you. There's a link to the actual function in the, the comments below. So see if you can use it. BA Sensei out.